supposed to be. This is why Raven over here. Today is Monday, so happy Magic Monday to all of you guys. Thank you so much for gracing me with your presence today. I am very excited to be here today and honestly, I am happy to share this video with you today and put an end to these two videos that I have shared with you last Monday and this Monday. It was a lot of research and I am ready to do something else. But I really hope that these two videos inspire you, right? Stimulate you, ignite something on you so you can start your own research. If you're new to this channel, my name is White Raven and I'm here teaching magic from my perspective. If this is something that interests you, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. You'll learn a thing or two about witchcraft, how to do magic, and today we're going to be talking about many plants that are very common uh, in witchcraft and to all of us and they're extremely poisonous and I want to share with you the name of these plants and how do we use them in magic and you know things that they can potentially do to you if you are not careful handling them. So this is a very important video which is I hope you take notes and I hope you appreciate the time, effort and love that have been put into this video. Last week we were talking about five plants, five sisters from the family of the nightshades. And these five plants were deadly nightshade, Atropa belladona. We talk about Datura, which is also known as Jimson weed. We also talk about Mandrake, a plant that everybody in the witchcraft community knows. We also talk about tobacco. And finally, we talk about henbane. All of these plants have been linked to the witches' flying ointment. And they have been directly linked to witches for hundreds of years. And I think that they link to witches mostly because since they're poisonous, they want to link them to the witches because they want, always want to make witches always bad. So why not link them to these very poisonous plants on Mother Earth? Well, today's not going to be any different. Just because we shared with you those super deadly plants last week does not mean that the ones that I'm going to share here today are any better. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of plants out there that are extremely toxic. So why are plants toxic? And I'm getting that information from here, which is one of the books that I suggest for you to get last week. I'm going to put in the description of the video the link to get all these books. So plants, they, they cannot run, right? They cannot run away. They cannot move. They cannot get away from attackers. So in the wisdom of Mother Nature, this beautiful plant develop this strategy to protect themselves by creating poisons and chemical substances that are very toxic against humans and any other uh, mammals out there. So that's one of the reasons why plants are so toxic. Now, having said that, witches use many of these toxic plants for magic. And many times we handle these plants without actually researching the plant first to make sure that they are not poisonous or toxic or in which way they can harm you and me. So today I'm going to share with you 10 plants that are commonly used in witchcraft and some of them I'm pretty sure you have a home right now and they are extremely toxic. Some of them are deadly and some other ones are very toxic towards our animals. I hope you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, let's start with our toxic little list. <laughs> Number one is not a plant. It's going to be a fruit. And you're going to be very surprised that I'm adding this over here. But number one is the one and only the apple. Now, apple in reality is not toxic. However, throughout times, apple has been linked to a lot of baneful magic, a lot of curses. Personally, I like to use apple for banishing and for curses. Two weeks ago, I shared with you guys a spell in which we use an apple to punish and banish someone. Some of the magical properties of apples are going to be for healing, immortality, love, beauty, divination. Deities that are linked to apples are going to be Venus, Apollo, Aphrodite, Hera, Athena, Diana, and Zeus, among other ones. Apples are extremely linked to the underworld, to the dead, to your ancestors, to spiritual workings. Apple is an extremely important fruit 
on sewing. I have shared with you some videos of things that I do on sewing with apples because apples are directly linked to the underworld, to the dead. As a curious fact, let me tell you something. The word for apple in Latin is malum, and this is something I shared with you before. And malum, my dear, which is means evil. So we have a little fruit that we love and we enjoy, and the Latin name is evil. So something to think about. And another curious fact, which is, you know, that the Trojan War started because of an apple. Check it out. You'll like the story. Now, apples, pits, contain cyanide. Now, there's a lot of pits out there and fruits that also contain cyanide, but the pits on the apple could be extremely toxic. Maybe not necessarily for humans, because you need to eat a lot of apple pits in order to get sick, but very toxic to animals. Now, I use the pits of apple in baneful magic. I like to use those pits in order to poison someone's heart. Like if you feel like two people is in love and you want somebody to feel bad and, and, and poison that person's heart towards their girlfriend or their boyfriend, you can use the pits of an apple to do such a spell. You can use the symbolism of the pits to poison somebody's soul, somebody's happiness, somebody's mind. So I personally love using not only apples, but the pits for baneful magic because I like the symbolism of apple pits, the cyanide on it. So please be very mindful with handling the apples and make sure that your pets do not eat the pits. I'm gonna share with you some of the poison symptoms if you get intoxicated with cyanide. Headache, dizziness, fast heart rate, shortness of breath, seizures, slow heart rate, low blood pressure, and cardiac arrest. I mean, there's cyanide and other things out there, but now you know that apples do contain some cyanide in their pits. <laughs> Number two, and I bet you did not see this one coming, High John the Conqueror. One of the most popular by far in Hoodoo. We use it for many things, for male potency, we use it for protection. I have a great spell over here in this channel about keeping the police away with your High John the Conqueror. They are used for money, for love. They're very good to eliminate depression and for many, many other things. Now, you can grab one of the High John Conqueror root. You can just cut them, put them in oil, and make high John Conqueror oil. However, witches, the root is poisonous. Do not eat it. Do not put it in your mouth. And I tell you more. If you put high John the Conqueror in oil and you have an open wound and you touch that oil, you will absorb the poison of the high John the Conqueror root into your system. The poison in high John the Conqueror is a toxin called lysergic acid amide. It's kind of like LSD. And it can cause diarrhea, serious electrolyte imbalances, and some gastrointestinal issues if it's absorbed through a wound in your skin. So be very mindful when using High John the Conqueror. So I bet you did not know this one. Number three, one of my babies, one of my favorites, one of my beloveds, Lily of the Valley. Now, funny thing is that Lily of the Valley is a plant that is used for very positive magic. I don't see Lily of the Valley that way. I mean, you can use the plant however you want. I'm just here sharing with you how I use the plant and the things that people use it for in magic, okay? So Lily of the Valley is very linked to the fairy realm. They smell amazing. They really do. They're beautiful flowers. And a funny fact is that a lot of brights use them in their bouquet. Kate Middleton used Lily of the Valley as her bouquet when she married Prince Williams. Is his name? I don't know. I'm not very much into the royalty. But yeah, Kate Middleton use lily of the valley in her bouquet and lily of the valley are toxic everything in the plant is toxic everything everything so some of the magical uses of lily of the valley is going to be for love mental power happiness communication she's directly linked to planet mercury and the element of air and some of the deities that are related to lily of the valley are apollo and aesculapius sorry i did not do a research to get for you who that deity is but lily of the valley has something that is called cardia glycosoids you know how the nightshade had a toxin that is called alkaloids well lily of the valley has something else that is called and other plants has it too 
cardiac glycosides, and they are very dangerous for your heart. Believe it or not, they use it in medicine nowadays, but it's not for you to be going out there and putting any part of that plant in your mouth because that will directly, immediately affect your heart. I use Lily of the Valley on Baneful Magic only, and that is me. That's how I see Lily of the Valley, and that's what Lily of the Valley inspires in me. So I use it literally to make somebody's life miserable, to create issues and problems, health problems on somebody. Now, having said that, if you're ever going to use Lily of the Valley for such things, make sure which that you are justified because life has a very nasty way to come back and bite you in the but if you do things that are not justified. Some of the symptoms of being poisoned by lily of the valley are visual disturbances, vomiting, and cardiac arrhythmia. So please make sure that you do not in any way consume. If you touch it, I mean, you saw me the other day, I collected some of the ladies of the valleys in my garden. I use gloves. Make sure you use gloves. They're drying somewhere in here <laughs> in my room and I'll be using them eventually for something painful. Uh, but just make sure that you know how to handle them, okay? Now, this one next is another plant that you may not believe it could be hurtful to you. Not necessarily it's going to kill you, but it could be extremely painful to handle it the wrong way. And that is number four. Rue. The deities that are directly linked to Rue are Diana and Aradia. And the magical uses for Rue, among many other things, healing, health, mental power, love, exorcism, it's good to use Rue so people bathe themselves with Rue. I mean, Rue is really important in our magical practices. We use Rue a lot. But please, witches, let me tell you this one thing. The, the sap from the plant, if you're going to go outside and you said, oh, look, I have rue in my backyard. Oh, hi, look, I have rue in this field. Please be very careful because the sap of rue under the sun creates something that is called phototoxicity. And if that sap goes into your skin under the sun, you are going to have some serious burns. So this is what I said, just buy the herb already. Don't go be collecting the brew out there unless you know how to handle it and you are 100% protected. You don't want any burns in your skin. Also, if it is ingested in large amounts, and when I talk large amounts, large amounts, it could cause toxic reaction. Like for example, super violent gastric pain. Everything's gonna cause you gastric pain for what I see. Vomiting, liver damage, and it can even cause death. I mean, I don't know why would you be ingesting a lot of rue, but please be mindful, which is before you eat a plant that you think is good for you and whatever, Listen, which is doing any plant. Just check first, please. Check first. Number five, one of my most and most needed and most used plants. This is calamus, which is calamus is an extremely important herb when you are doing any type of commanding spells. Calamus and licorice root have been the combination for centuries for commanding spells. You need it for commanding, among other things. I strictly use Calamus for commanding whenever I need to command someone, particularly in combination with licorice root. Now, Calamus has four different strains throughout the world, and three of them, which is, if you ingest it, could cause cancer. Calamus is directly linked to the moon and the element of water. And people in magic can also use it for, apart from commanding, luck, healing, money, protections, and many other things that maybe you are used to use calamus for. Please be very careful with calamus. Do not put it in your mouth, okay? Some of the side effects of calamus toxic poisoning is kidney damage, shaking, seizures, and again, three of the four species in the world have chemicals that could cause 
cancer. So be very respectful of calamus. That's not to say for you not to use it, but now you know, okay, which is now you know. Okay, which is so I'm almost done with this video. Now I'm going to share with you five more plants that you may be surprised, but you may even have them right now inside your house or in your backyard. So let's talk about those five plants. Number one, foxglove. I have my own, I'm gonna put a picture over here of my beautiful foxglove. And those are nutty little plants and everything on that plant is 100% toxic and it will kill you. Foxglove is linked to water, to the element of water and to Venus. And in magic it's used for general protection and also protection from evil. A very long time ago, witches used to make a black ink out of the leaf of foxglove and mark the floors of their houses to protect themselves and their home against evil. Sort of like an exorcism type of ink. I will not recommend for you to be making no type of inks with the leaves. I'm just saying this is something that they used to use maybe hundreds of years ago. Don't do it. <laughs> just keep it outside in your garden and just it's so pretty just talk to it and, and tell her that you like her very much it contains a toxin that impedes circulation and is going to slow down your heart all the way to stop so be very careful with fox globe do not ingest <laughs> number two one of those super pretty ornamental plants dumb cane pretty evil nasty plant you know they used to use it back in the day to punish people it may not necessarily kill you it potentially could but everything in the plant is poisonous i use this plant i personally use this plant for any tapa boca or shut your mouth spell or to actually wither away somebody that is being evil to you again if you're going to use any of these plants that i'm sharing here with you today understand that if you're going to use them for their baneful properties be very justified which is because this is not a game i said something to you in my past video by harold roth some of these plants you think you're just sending out there a bullet when in reality you're sending a, a whole missile so be very careful with the spells that you do with these plants okay every part of a dumb cane is toxic which is the leaves the stalk everything is toxic on this plant that you may have right now in your house you can have it you can breathe around it you can look at it you can touch it just do not ingest it because this plant contains these microscopic little needles that when you swallow that plant they will embed themselves in your throat in your vocal cords which it will impede you for speaking and you will have serious problems trying to breathe could it cost you death potentially just be very careful with this plant it is great for magic particularly for baneful tapaboca shut up uh, punishing people but which is be very careful not to put your hands in your mouth when you're handling this plant or just to ingest the plant just don't ingest the plant all right just be smart <laughs> don't ingest the plant and the same token i just want to make sure just make sure that when you have all these ornamental plants in your house check them out because many of them are actually poisonous number three from the plant that you may have right now in your backyard one that is extremely popular monk's hood or wolf bane now this plant is extremely toxic everything about this plant is actually extremely poisonous and it could potentially be deadly now this plant is a little powerhouse which is this plant is linked to Ecate. The planet that rules this plant is Saturn. And the element that rules this plant is water. A very powerful plant. Some of the most important magical properties of Wolfsbane or Monk's Hood is going to be protection. It's going to be invisibility. And as a matter of fact, if this is something that you believe in, I do. This plant will protect you against werewolves, and vampires as a matter of fact and i commercial my own commercial i have an amazing black salt infused with silver that i also use for the same purpose this plant is very powerful i tell you more if you put a leaf of this plant inside the skin of lizard and you carry with you you have the ability to become invisible at will i know some of you guys think that when i say invisible i'm talking about me disappearing but the idea of becoming invisible is very different in magic. So maybe what you be, may be thinking is not like you're going to have like Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. But you become invisible 
to whoever you need to become invisible to. But those are some of the properties of this incredible plant. However, it's poisonous, which is it's deadly. It's extremely important that you do not ingest this plant. And before I go into number four, I'm going to share with you some of the signs and symptoms if you are intoxicated or you have been poisoned with wolf's bane. You're gonna have gastrointestinal troubles, nasty ones. And then you're gonna have the sensation of ants crawling underneath your skin. I can't not even imagine that. You're gonna have numbness of the mouth and face, a terrible weakness. And then which is, you're gonna have a paralysis of heart and lungs <laughs> and death is by asphyxiation. Just be very mindful with wolf's pain. Number four, something that my grandma used to have all over her back here, ferns, which is ferns. Not all of them, many of them are actually poisonous. Ferns are directly linked to Laka, which is the Hawaiian goddess of hula, which is, I think, the dance. And also, ferns are directly linked to Puck, which is a very mischievous fairy. It is also linked to mercury and the element of air. But in magic, people use it for protection, luck, riches, eternal use, exorcisms, health, and many other things. Make sure, again, not to, what? Ingest it. Do not ingest witches. And according to what I read, it could take time for you to start feeling the effects of poisoning of ferns, but you can have cardiac issues, which is, that's also going to come with vomiting and uh, stomach issues, okay? So be very, be very careful, which is, do not ingest. The last plant that I'm going to share with you is one that is extremely poisonous. All parts of this plant are toxic. One leaf can cause a really bad issue in an adult. Not only that, you need to handle this plant with gloves because you don't want to touch it with your bare hands. And those are oleanders. And these are beautiful plants with beautiful flowers. This plant is linked to Saturn and is also linked to the element of Earth. In magic, believe it or not, it's used for love. If you have oleanders at home, if you have a big uh, land and you find oleanders, just be very careful. The plant is extremely toxic and poisonous. You should handle with extreme care and you should be covered when you are dealing with this plant, especially if you're plucking leaves and stuff like that to do any type of love spell. I tell you this, you know, there's some other plants that are safer to use if you want to use them on love spells. But I'm telling you about oleanders because they are out there. They're beautiful and they do not look like they're going to kill you. Just be very careful, witches. Just because it has flowers and pretty fruits does not mean that they are harmless. On oh, oleander, the sap is also extremely irritant. So again, make sure that if you're going to handle this plant, you are protected. Some of the side effects of being poisoned by this plant are dysrhythmias, cardiac failure, and cardiac arrest. So this plant is not playing, so make sure you don't play either. And that's it, which is there are many, many, many other plants that I did not put over here because otherwise we will take an entire day to talk about toxic plants. I do, however, hope that these inspire you to do your own research. It's fascinating. I tell you that you're not going to get bored. Since the last time we talked about this, I gathered more books. And again, I am, I show you this one, Scott Cunningham. Plants That Kill. I have this one over here, Wicked Plants. I love uh, this book by Harold Roth, Witching Herbs. Very, very good book. Another book that I got after I did the video last week, Death in the Garden. This one is British, but it has a lot of the plants that we have. I also fell in love with this guy. His name is Kobe Michael. And I got this new book. It's called The Poison Path Herbal. Baneful Herbs, Medicinal Nightshade, and Ritual Enthegioins. I'm sorry, I probably killed that. I'll put the link of that book in the description of this video. Of course, I talked to you about this one. Botanical Curses and Poisons. And last, Cold Peppers Complete Herbal. Another book that I also highly suggest, and again, which is, I'm going to put the link of all this book in the description of the video, because you should get inspired, and you should be doing your own research when it comes to herbs. So whenever you see a spell out there, if you have any of these books, even the internet, 
If you have in a spell, you have calamus, let's say basil, and you have a roses, just make sure that you know if you have any toxicity in those plants that you're using and what to do to protect yourself. You need to learn how to handle your plants. This is part of being a witch. And I'm, I'm applying this to myself as well. So for all of us, I hope this inspire you and this brings a lot of more wisdom, which is more wisdom. Thank you. All right, witches, thank you so much for being here with me again. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me what other plants you have in your garden that are toxic and you love working with them. If you have any questions, you can email me at layerofthewitcheryahoo.com. Remember that I do not work for people. Keep your emails short. Remember that I am in Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I'm there for you, witches. And visit my beautiful website, whiteravenandwitcheslayer.com, in which I have many of these herbs already bottled for you, just in case you want to work with them. I'm going to finish this video with something that I read in Harold's Rust book the other day. I want to finish with this. If a potentially harmful herbs make you feel uncomfortable, which don't work with it, you don't have to, but learn about it from books and the experiences of others. Gradually, which is, you can decide whether you want to go further. It is not a requirement for any witch to work with baneful plants. You can work with the rose for the rest of your magical life and not be any less I love this of a witch than someone who has buckets of belladonna and wolfsbane around remember witches it is not the tool it is what you do with it that counts from this book witches you must stay very smart because knowledge is power and with all that knowledge, you will stay so very wicked. Love you, witches. See you Monday. Bye.